Great job, everybody. This is the debrief for our first high performance youth sailing program in quite a while. And uh, this was for the February, March timeframe that we just finished up. You guys just completed the, the National Offshore One Design Regatta in South Bay and great job there. It was really great. The kids that have been sailing two to six years, the tier one kids kind of set the bar for the tier two kids who after about less than 30 hours in the boat, sailed really well and got through a pretty windy Friday. I know that was a challenge, what, 13, 16, 17 knots. Uh, but overall, the February and March program went great. We didn't have a lot of time to spend on the whiteboard and you guys responded very well. We threw you in the fire a few times. Uh, what you did good, attitude was good, participation was good. You, When you show up, you need to participate right away, dive in so that we all get the most out of our practices. And I would say we pretty we kind of did that. You did a good job of staying upright. Uh, no one really had times where they gave up or got frustrated um, with the capsizing because if you do in a 29er, what it results in is usually more capsizes. And that didn't really happen to us too much. You guys did a pretty good job of staying upright. I've done a lot of these clinics and... I would say easily above average, well above average when it came to that compared to what I've done uh, in the past. Teamwork was good. I think, again, we have to remember that every single person is crucial to our success. We have to look at everybody lifting each other up and us working together as a group. Pretty good work on that. I'd say above average there. Overall for the clinic, fundamentals were balance and flat. We wanted to establish your initial slow speed balance your initial balance in the boat. We gave you some very fundamental core things of how to do that, body position and things, but did not spend a lot of time at it. You did good. And then generally flat, meaning not trying to get too glittery with roll tacks and roll jibes. And we do have to do roll tacks and roll jibes in light air to pop the battens and to, to you know get a little effect. But again, the boat is a boat that as you get better and better, you're sailing it flatter and flatter all the time. Uh, our slow speed maneuvering, we learned a lot about that. How to hold position, how to do double tacks. Um, I know maybe some of that doesn't make sense to you, but make sure you visit um, uh, YouTube and look up Olympic medal races, 49er Olympic medal races, and watch that critical component of a race is that last minute, minute and a half before the start where you have to be able to hold position, do double tacks, keep maneuverability even though the boat's not moving. So we worked a lot on that. Um, we didn't talk a lot about main and jib trim, but we did hit on the fundamentals, which is you've got to play the main sheet intelligently and not pumping it out and in dramatically. So we, we tried to focus on keeping your adjustments relatively small, because that's what you're gonna get to someday. And then on jib trim, making sure that we could see its relationship to the leech, I mean, excuse me, to the spreader and trying to get you generally getting the jib into the right place. And, you know, we did pretty good. I would say kids tended to under trim their jib and over trim their mains when it came, well, not over trim the main, uh, often the bottom of the mains was really flat because we either had the vang on more than we wanted especially downwind. People were leaving their vangs on downwind and the bottom of the main was boarded out flat. Um, so anyway, no real determining factor of what we did or good or bad, but make sure you focus a lot on the main and the jib trim. We talked a lot about fore and aft movement. That's probably the biggest learning difference. These skiffs are designed to sail in eight plus knots of wind. So the stern is designed to be the best somewhere, I'm guessing around 11 or 12 plus knots. And so that means in under eight, and for big teams under nine-ish, the stern is just drag. So you've got to get that bow down and the stern more out of the water or not dragging. So um, four and a half movement is crucial. You guys did a pretty good job. We tried to emphasize it and uh, definitely a fundamental core thing in 29ers is very crucial that we uh, move four and aft as the wind changes. We learned a lot about soaking. We had soaking conditions almost all the time downwind, and that is one of the modes we use downwind. We have three modes. We have the reach mode, planing mode, which is more in you know seven, eight plus knots, and especially once we get above 10, 
we're in full reach mode to, to get the apparent wind way up and get the boat ripping. Uh, soaking is the opposite of that. Soaking is trying to gain distance downwind without killing the pressure on the spinnaker. So it, it's a real experiment of how low can I go uh, without killing the power in the spinnaker and when is it that I'm trying to go too high. So there's a lot of things we need to learn about soaking, but you got to do it a lot and you were guys were pretty good at it. Um, that's where the crew is sitting, straddling the mast, moving in and out. And uh, the skipper is either on their bottom or in that Mickey Mouse position we talked to you about. Uh, fundamental lineups, we did the five second lineups. We did a bunch of whistles, you line up and then we do five, four, three, two, one, go. And you got to get a little better at the lineups, but you definitely, we focused on those because consistent lineups where we're all in the same position relative to each other is really the best way to get good at sailboat racing. Being able to develop your speed and your feel for that speed by doing it a lot with a very consistent lineup with three or four boats. And then we also fundamentally, we established the two and one drill. So two whistles is change direction and one whistle was tack or jive. Things we needed to improve for sure, rigging. Um, consistently, we had at least one boat, maybe two at every practice that got off in the spinnaker hired would be twisted on the forestay. You gotta look up when you do your boat breaker. You can't put the forestay on without looking up because you're going to twist the spinnaker hired. And then if you don't look up and rig the jib hired, you'll often have to re-lower the jib later as you realize that you've screwed up both of them. But less talking, more rigging. We talked about that a few times. You gotta show up ready to go. We've gotta get, we wanna have quality practices. We can talk and do all that other stuff later. But we, the time we are sailing or practicing, we need to just make that our quality time and be focused just like we'd be focused if it was a race day. Um, obviously we need to improve steering through jibes. People tended to understeer on those jibes and that was for, for two reasons. One is the crews are still figuring out how to switch sides and get out on the trap, but also with the skippers being gun shy and not turning the boat quite enough because they think it's gonna help control the boat. Um, so we gotta work on that. Uh, work in, next time you're in the boats, really work on exits from jibes. Uh, we need to improve jib trim into the tacks. There was many times I talked about people easing the jib into the tacks and they would do the next tack, not ease the jib, come out of the tack with the jib tight and the boat's slow, so you have less wind, right? And it takes forever for the boat to get back up to what we call the VMG speed. So you wanna be easing the jib into the tacks, grab the main sheet right after you ease it, get through the tack, accelerate with that slightly eased jib, hand the main sheet to the crew, and then trim the jib in uh, pretty quickly. You don't leave it out for very long. But again, your VMG is horrible if the jib doesn't go out. Um, and there are tacks where you don't have to play the jib. Sometimes it's nine knots, the crew nails their job and everything, but most of the time we gotta do that better. And then we gotta improve on stalling. There was times where people would be going upwind and they would be too low and the lured side of the jib was stalling and they would not notice that a bunch of other people were gaining miles on them. Stalling is not as bad as luffing, but almost. So when you get a light spot, be very careful upwind of bearing off too much because if you stall half the jib, you are gonna slow down dramatically and the boat's gonna lose all of its helm and uh, you're just gonna go lower and slower. And then stalling on the spinnaker. Um, I don't think we were bad at it, but you definitely have to curl the spinnaker anytime the boat has lost speed you've got to make sure the spinnaker is getting wind on the leeward side of it. So you've got to make sure you're as loose as you can go without luffing. And you do the little curl to get that flow over the leeward side. Because if you stall the spinnaker, the spinnaker doesn't pull out as hard away from you. Okay. Um, time for you guys now to do more for the tier two kids it's time for you to do more of your own homework and really go through some detailed boat handling. Study it on YouTube. Go to skiffsailing.org. Start reading Willie McBride stuff and the Wilson Brothers. Uh, go to usa29er.org and go all to the texts and the tips and start studying all these. 
pre-start boat handling, tacking and jibing, the detailed stuff. Watch the videos. Watch the mark roundings. And then you guys need to do repetition. You need to go out and practice by yourself sometimes and work on repetition on all this stuff. Repeatedly doing, let's say, eight windward mark roundings or three um, pre-starts in a row or whatever it is. Do multiple times of these types of things. And also do it where you're pretending you're in a race. Go out and pretend you're winning a race. You're in the top three and then go out and do these drills, okay? And our, one of our big goals for you guys is to sail more often with less coaching, okay? Um, the 29er, I would love for you guys to race 29ers, but my biggest thing I learned as I watch people is they just flat out love sailing the boat. So go out there, sail in a group, go in a small group, three or four boats for safety, and go out and just sail. And some days you don't even do any detailed boat handling. Just go out and rip it around and pick buoys and race to them and just laugh and have a great time. Uh, you know, just get out there and sail more. Okay? What else do we need to do? It's time to get a loose gauge. It's time to start studying the rig settings. It's a little complicated because everybody's different weights and different skill levels. A smaller, less experienced team is going to have to carry a tiny bit more attention than a more of a team, a more experienced team. We need to measure our travelers. A smaller team is going to need more vang in the same given condition, so their traveler is going to be an inch tighter when they leave the dock than a little bigger team, let's say. You measure from the transom, the top of the transom, to the where the main sheet uh, goes through the main sheet block. You measure right to there and then compare it to all your friends' boats and start making some intelligent decisions on what tension am I going to be going at, what's my traveler setting, and... Uh, doing that. Uh, our next suggestion for you is what are you going to do? If you're the tier one group, you guys have a regatta May 16, 17 in Santa Barbara. The tier two group, you guys could go to that, but you have a problem in that there's a Club 420 regatta in Cabrillo Beach that weekend. So you've got a choice to make. If you don't own your own boat, you're going to the 420 regatta. If you own your own boat, you could do either. So you got to think about what are you going to do next? What are you going to do? You're going to get online, you're going to look up the notice of race, you're going to read it, and if you're going to either of those two events, either the Perry Regatta in Cabrillo Beach, Club 420s, or the 29er Regatta in Santa Barbara, May 15, 16, they're both the same weekend, register. Get signed up. Some of you guys did not do a good enough job of registering for the U.S. sailing event two weeks ago, the nude regatta. Don't let that happen. Get the notice of race, figure it out. Don't ask your coaches when the start time is, when the skipper's meeting is. Don't ask. The coaches shouldn't answer those questions. You guys have all the information right now when you're watching this. All of that stuff is probably posted. Okay, wrapping up here. Knife. I know Stella and Jet got the one Brian told him to get. Get a really good knife that fits on your life jacket, on your uh, harness, or on your somewhere on your chest. Get a really good whistle so that you can blow a whistle if you have a dangerous situation, serious situation sometime. Uh, and we even recommend a VHF radio, carrying it so you guys can talk to each other, uh, but you can also listen to your coaches when you're at our future clinics. Listen to the plan. Okay, we already talked about what your next event is. So going back quickly, study YouTube. Start going through all of this. Detailed boat handling. Start studying it. You don't need a coach to tell you a lot of it. The coach, it's all free right on the internet. You don't got to pay a coach to teach you boat handling because you can, you, you know, you can, but right now it's time for you to do some of your own studying. We talked about all of that stuff. Great job. It was a great clinic and uh, we'll be in touch soon about what's next for the tier two group.